China just built a bridge so massive, its main span stretches over 1,200 meters without a single support touching the water. The cables are strong enough to hold a skyscraper in midair. It's called the Changtai Yangtze River Bridge, 10.3 kilometers long and the longest cable stayed bridge ever built. But here's the real story. This is not about breaking records. It's about erasing the last major bottleneck in one of Earth's richest economic corridors and revealing something huge about China's future global power. Let's start with scale, because the scale here is absolutely insane. The total bridge stretches 10.3 kilometers across the Yangtze River. But the real engineering miracle is the main span, 1,208 meters suspended by cables without any support pillars in between. That makes it the longest cable stayed span ever built, shattering the previous record by over 100 meters. To put that in perspective, you could fit four Golden Gate bridges end to end under just the main span. The towers holding up those cables? Each one rises 350 meters into the sky. That's taller than the Eiffel Tower. And these towers have to support forces equivalent to the weight of 100,000 cars pulling in every direction simultaneously. According to project estimates, China used 460,000 tons of steel to build this bridge. That's enough steel to construct 65 Eiffel Towers. The concrete? over 2.3 million cubic meters. The main cables alone contain 60,000 kilometers of steel wire, enough to wrap around the earth one and a half times. Construction took six years and required 2,000 engineers and workers operating around the clock. This multi-billion dollar project represents one of the most significant infrastructure investments in the Yangtze Delta region. Now, crossing this bridge takes about 20 minutes by car. If you walked across it without stopping, it would take roughly two to two and a half hours. Not exactly a casual stroll, but manageable. It's the world's first triple modal cable stayed bridge designed to carry expressway traffic, regular highway traffic and high speed rail, all on a single structure. No one has ever built anything like this before. Engineers will tell you that building the world's longest cable stayed bridge with integrated rail capacity isn't just about bragging rights. It's about solving a specific problem that couldn't be solved any other way. And in this case, that problem is the Yangtze River itself. The Yangtze River is the third longest river in the world, and it essentially divides China's economic heartland. This section of the Yangtze, where the Changtai Bridge now stands, is one of the busiest shipping corridors on the planet. Every day, hundreds of massive cargo ships pass through, carrying everything from electronics to steel to agricultural products. The river here is deep, fast-moving, and critical to global trade. You can't just build normal bridge supports in the middle of that shipping lane. You'd create a maritime disaster. That's why China needed a cable-stayed design with a 1,208-meter main span. Ships up to 50,000 tons can pass underneath without any obstruction. The clearance is high enough for the tallest cargo vessels, and there are no pillars in the water to create navigation hazards. But here's the bigger picture. The Yangtze Delta region, which includes Shanghai, Nanjing, Suzhou, and dozens of other cities, produces nearly 25% of China's entire GDP. This area is home to 150 million people and is one of the most economically productive regions in human history. Before the Changtai Bridge, crossing the Yangtze in this section meant massive detours or waiting for overcrowded existing bridges that were already operating beyond capacity. Trucks carrying electronics from inland factories to Shanghai's ports would lose hours in transit. Manufacturing companies couldn't reliably deliver goods on time logistics networks were stretched to breaking point. Every day this bottleneck existed, it cost the region billions in lost productivity and efficiency. Companies were making location decisions based on which side of the river they could access more easily. Investment was flowing to areas with better connectivity while other regions languished. So China made a decision. They would build a bridge so advanced, so over-engineered for the challenge that it would eliminate the bottleneck forever and unlock the full economic potential of the Yangtze Delta. Here's what most people miss. The Changtai Bridge is not just about connecting two sides of a river. It's a critical piece of China's Belt and Road Initiative and the broader Yangtze River Economic Belt strategy. The Yangtze River Economic Belt is one of China's top national development priorities. The goal is to create seamless integration between China's interior provinces and its coastal economic powerhouses. Every product made in inland cities like Chengdu, Chongqing, or Wuhan needs efficient routes to reach Shanghai, Ningbo, or other coastal ports to get exported to the world. The Changtai Bridge, 
cuts transportation time by significant margins for goods and people moving through this corridor. When you're talking about millions of shipments per year, saving even 30 to 40 minutes per trip translates to billions of dollars in economic value. Think about what that means for a factory in central China. Getting products to a shipping port half an hour faster might not sound dramatic, but in modern supply chains, that's the difference between meeting a contract deadline and losing a deal. Multiply that across tens of thousands of factories and you're talking about massive competitive advantages. But China's thinking even bigger. This is where the triple modal design becomes revolutionary. The Changtai Bridge is designed to handle cars and trucks on its upper deck, standard highway traffic on another level, and high-speed rail, all simultaneously. This is a world first. No cable-stayed bridge has ever integrated three different transportation modes on a single structure. China is building a network of bullet trains that will eventually connect every major economic zone in the country at speeds of 350 km per hour. The Changtai Bridge ensures that trains travelling through the Yangtze Delta don't have to slow down, detour or use separate infrastructure. Rail, highway and expressway traffic all flow across the same bridge, creating unprecedented efficiency. This creates something extraordinary, a seamless economic zone stretching from China's western interior all the way to the Pacific coast. Minimal friction, minimal delays, just uninterrupted flow of goods, people and capital, by road, by rail, at multiple speed tiers. Western economists have a term for this, economic velocity. The faster goods and people can move, the richer a region becomes. China is engineering velocity on a scale the world has never seen an infrastructure like the Changtai Bridge is how they're doing it. The bridge connects directly into expressway networks that link to belt and road corridors extending west towards Central Asia and south towards Southeast Asia. It's a node in a much larger system designed to reshape global trade flows. But building something this ambitious comes with real challenges and real costs that China has had to navigate carefully. Building a 10.3-kilometer cable-stayed bridge with a record-breaking 1,208-meter main span across one of the world's busiest rivers requires inventing new technology. The Yangtze carries approximately 30,000 cubic meters of water per second through this section. That's like 12 Olympic swimming pools flowing past every single second. The riverbed is soft sediment that shifts with currents and seasonal flooding. And this section of the river sits in a seismically active zone, meaning earthquakes are a real threat. Chinese engineers developed what they call deep water foundation technology specifically for this project. They drove massive steel and concrete pillars, known as caissons, over 65 meters deep into the riverbed. That's deeper than a 20-story building is tall. Each foundation weighs thousands of tons and had to be positioned with millimeter precision while fighting river currents that could easily knock a construction barge off course. The bridge towers had to be built to withstand typhoon force winds exceeding 200 kilometers per hour, earthquakes up to magnitude 7, and even direct ship collisions. That last part is crucial. This is one of the busiest shipping lanes on the planet. Massive cargo ships, some weighing 50,000 tons, pass under the bridge constantly. The design had to ensure that even a collision wouldn't compromise the entire structure. The cable system is its own engineering marvel. Each main cable contains thousands of individual steel strands that had to be precisely tensioned to support the deck while allowing for thermal expansion, wind loads, and the constant vibration from traffic. Getting this wrong by even a small percentage would cause catastrophic structural failure. But here's where it gets really complex. Remember, this bridge carries three different transportation modes. That means three different load distributions, three different vibration patterns, three different safety systems, all on one cable-stayed structure. Engineers had to calculate how a high-speed train passing at 350 km per hour would interact with heavy truck traffic just meters away. They had to design deck sections that could handle rail loads without transmitting excessive vibration to the roadway above. No one had ever done this before. There was no playbook. Chinese engineers essentially had to write new structural engineering standards from scratch. Then there's the human cost. Construction displaced several thousand residents from communities along the riverbank. According to local reports, some residents felt the compensation didn't fully account for the disruption to their lives and livelihoods. Environmental groups have raised concerns about impacts on local ecosystems during the construction phase. Regional reports suggest changes in fish populations, though comprehensive long-term environmental studies are still ongoing. 
Chinese state media naturally focused on the engineering triumph, and it genuinely is a triumph. But like any mega project, there were trade-offs and challenges that don't make the headlines. Now here's the part that fascinates engineers worldwide. China completed this bridge in six years. Western engineers estimate a similar project in Europe or the United States would take 12 to 15 years, possibly longer. How did China do it so much faster? It's not about cutting corners, it's about capacity. China has developed a construction ecosystem unlike anything in the world. They have specialized firms that only build bridges. Universities that train thousands of civil engineers specifically in mega infrastructure. Equipment manufacturers producing custom machinery you can't buy anywhere else. And a governance structure that can coordinate between dozens of agencies without the gridlock that paralyzes Western projects. Add to that genuine technological advantages, China now leads the world in bridge engineering in several categories, and you get projects that simply move faster than what Western countries can currently achieve. China now builds more infrastructure in a single year than the United States and Europe combined. They're constructing bridges, airports, high-speed rail networks, and entire urban districts at a pace that seemed impossible a generation ago. The Changtai Bridge is a perfect example of this model. Identify a critical bottleneck, design a world-class solution, mobilize the resources and expertise to build it quickly. The result is infrastructure that generates immediate economic returns by unlocking productivity that was previously constrained. This approach gives China enormous advantages in economic competition. They can respond to infrastructure needs faster than other major economies. They can connect regions, reduce logistics costs, and create conditions for growth that would take competitors a decade or more to replicate. The triple modal design is particularly significant. By integrating rail, highway, and expressway on a single structure, China has created a template for future megabridges worldwide. This is about maximizing the utility of limited crossing points over major rivers and waterways. Other countries will study the Changtai Bridge for decades, trying to understand how to replicate this integration. But there are legitimate questions about sustainability. China's infrastructure spending is massive, and while many projects like the Changtai Bridge serve clear economic purposes, the country has also built infrastructure in some regions where demand hasn't materialized as expected. Local governments across China carry significant debt from development projects, and managing that debt while maintaining infrastructure quality will be a long-term challenge. Then there's the question of maintenance. The Changtai Bridge will need constant monitoring, inspections, and eventually major repairs. Cable-stayed bridges require particularly careful maintenance because cable failures can be catastrophic. Add in the complexity of maintaining rail infrastructure alongside highway systems and the long-term operational costs become substantial. Who funds that maintenance 30 or 40 years from now, especially if traffic volumes or toll revenues don't meet projections? And finally, there's the geopolitical dimension. China's infrastructure expertise isn't staying within its borders. They're exporting this model globally through Belt and Road. Countries across Asia, Africa, and even Europe are increasingly turning to Chinese firms to build critical infrastructure because, frankly, no one else can do it as quickly or affordably. This creates dependencies. Countries that rely on Chinese-built ports, railways, and highways become economically linked to Beijing in ways that will shape international relations for decades. Some countries have found this beneficial. Others have discovered it comes with strings attached. The Changtai Bridge might be inside China's borders, but the capability it represents, the ability to build world-leading infrastructure at speed, is reshaping the global economic landscape. So here's what we know. China built the world's longest cable-stayed bridge with the world's first triple-modal integration. It eliminates a major bottleneck across one of the most important economic corridors on the planet. This multi-billion dollar project took six years and required engineering techniques that push the boundaries of what's possible. But the real story is not just the bridge itself, it's what the bridge represents about economic strategy in the 21st century. China is building infrastructure at a pace and scale that other major economies simply aren't matching. They're connecting regions, reducing friction in supply chains, and creating the physical foundation for economic growth that will compound for generations. The Changtai Bridge is a demonstration of state capacity, the ability to identify a problem, design a world-class solution that integrates multiple transportation modes, and execute it faster than competitors thought possible. While other countries debate infrastructure bills and argue over funding, 
China is building. And every bridge, every rail line, every port they complete shifts the competitive balance in their favor. So here's the question nobody's asking. What happens when China finishes connecting every major city, every economic zone, every trade corridor across Asia? What happens when the infrastructure gap between China and the West becomes so wide that it fundamentally changes which economies can compete most effectively in global markets? We're watching that future take shape right now. And the Changtai Bridge, with its revolutionary triple modal design, is just one piece of a much larger puzzle that's still being assembled. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. We read every single one of them. And now, if you thought that bridge was impressive, wait until you see China's latest nuclear breakthrough, a reactor that never shuts down and could change energy forever. Click watch next to see how it works.